All right, this lesson is a request for different sweet picking shapes, uh, arpeggio shapes. So, uh, first of all, for the most part, most of the sweet patterns you'll probably learn will be triads. Now, a triad is, like it says, three notes, but those notes, now if you take the scale and write out all the notes in that scale. Uh, it's going to be the root note, the third, and the fifth. And that's just going to be repeated. Like, uh... same three notes repeating. Uh, now a major scale, if you take, okay also too, it's going to be the root third and the fifth of a major scale of that key. But, um, so if you write up the, like C major just for the hell of it, it's going to be, you know, C and then third, fifth. But that would be major triad. It's going to be root, third, fifth, as they're written out. Uh, if you want a minor shape, it's going to be the root. You're going to take the third note, and you're going to lower it a half step. And you're going to leave the fifth note the same. That changes it into a minor triad. Now, if you... Uh, and also, you, you keep reverting back to uh, the major, to where everything's the same as it is written out, and you just change like one of the notes um, to make to change what it is. Now for the most part you're going to see the major and the minor diminished, which is going to be the root, the third, and you're going to take the fifth note and you're going to lower it a half step, and that'll be your new note for diminished. And augmented is going to be the root, the third, and you're going to take the fifth and raise it a half step. I could be wrong on that one, but I'm pretty sure that's it. If it's, you know, if it's wrong, correct me. Uh, so all you're doing is changing the one note. So uh, that's all a triad is. And for the most part, the triads are going to be... Well, this kind of get... Yeah, I guess this is important now. When you start seeing that some of the expanded chords, some of the jazz chords... You're going to see like 9, 11, 13, even though for the most part there's only the eight notes in the scale, seven notes in the scale. The eight will be the root, the root again. Now, write out that whole scale, but write it out two times. Go from C to C, and then from that C to the next C. Okay, now basically you're going to be skipping one note each time. So it's going to be root, skip one, third, skip one, fifth, skip one, seventh. Then the next note right beside the seventh is going to be your root again. So, but it's getting skipped. So then it goes, so it's going to be root, third, fifth, seventh. And then the ninth is actually going to be the second. I need, really need to write this out. Uh, so it's going to be root, third, fifth, seventh. Where you skip the second note, that is going to be the ninth. The eleventh would actually be the fourth. Uh, the eleven would actually have been the sixth. Uh, the thirteenth would actually be... No, that's right. Wait a minute. Root 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th. So root 3rd, 5th, 7th, and then 9, 11, 13 are going to be the notes that you skipped the first time. Uh, and it, you really should write this out on paper. Uh, right. 
you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So there's two octaves of C major scale. Take a draw a line, like little hump lines from C, skip a note, skip a note, skip a note, all the way across. And each note you land on, that's going to be, you know, root would be C, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, thirteenth. So that's how you're going to expand your triad shapes for arpeggios. Uh, if you want to add, it won't be a triad anymore because there will be more than three notes, but you could take root, third, fifth, and seventh for like a diminished seven arpeggio. Um, so that's what that means. If you've seen those numbers before and didn't know what they mean, that's it. Uh, and that was the easiest way I could think of to explain it. If there's easier ways, please share. Because it took me a while to just figure that out. Um, and if someone says, you know, like, A diminished 7 with, you know, or whatever it is. With, if they say the 3rd is flat or something, all that's saying is going to be taking the 3rd note of that scale and lowering it a half step. If it says sharp, it's going to be raised a half step. So you're going half step intervals. So, uh, yeah, that's all that means if you see that. Now to make your own, take, you know, your key or the scale and, you know, write it out, find your root third, fifth, figure out if it's major, minor, diminished, <laughs> or whatever, dominant, uh, whatever it would be, Neapolitan, and then, you know, that's how you find your shape, and then just, you know, use a neck paper. They make neck paper and chord charts. If you've never seen a neck sheet, it's, this is all it is, really. It takes, it's, you know, laid out in a square, and uh, it has, you know, vertical lines that are going to be the strings, and it's going to have horizontal lines that are going to be the frets. And all you do is, you, you know, if it's on the sixth of the ring, third fret, draw a little uh, circle right there, and then draw a circle here, and, you know, find where those notes are, and that's going to actually be what it would look like. If you had all your fingers laid out here, that's what it would look like. So you can see it before you play it, and it helps you visualize the fretboard better also. Uh, and something else to help you pick which notes you want to add, um, you should probably, you know, there's no set rules or anything, but say if you were going to use harmonic minor over natural minor, really the only reason you would use that is because of the raised sixth. So, try playing, um, you know, the minor arpeggio, but add that, um, add the flat sixth. The, no, the raised sixth, sorry. Add the raised sixth, because that's the reason you played it. You want this. It's the only reason you want to play that over this. You know, just because of that one note, that's why you picked that scale. So why not put it in our, your arpeggio? Uh, you know, anything, any notes, any scales like that, like Lydian, if you're, you know, use a, uh, a major arpeggio, but add that raise fourth, because that's the note that's different. You know, that's the, probably the reason you would pick that scale anyways, so why not put it in your arpeggios? And that helps you pick which one real easy. Uh, and also the same way to add passing tones. Whatever you would use as a passing tone, keep it in your arpeggio. Uh, other ways to use arpeggios, not just to make them, but how to use them, would be uh, to outline the chord progression. Um, so you know how to harmonize. If you want to, if you outlined your chord progression, but now you want to harmonize it, same thing. It helps keep things fresh, uh, new ideas. Uh, you might need to add new techniques. You might need to add, you know, if you want to lay it out so that it's, you know, it's not straight sweet picking. Even though it's an arpeggio, if you want it to be more like, uh, you could add tapping, open strings. 
walleye tapping, uh, economy picking, you know, anything like that. Lay it out that certain way. Lay it out so that it it's within this certain spot. I don't want it to leave this area. So you might have to use, you know, an open string so your hand doesn't have to move from here. Or tapping so this hand can stay. Or uh, make it spread, as, take up as much fretboard as you can. You know, just, it, it helps you see the, where the notes are going to fall. And, it, you know, it might lead to something interesting where you have to slide into a note and then, you know, it's, it can just be a new way to look at things. Um, and also, instead of staying the patterns, adding notes, taking notes away, helps you uh, maybe break up the pattern. Like, uh, and even if you don't add or notes, instead of just going... See, I already forgot what it was. But, uh, take and repeat a certain part before you descend. Instead of going straight up and down, repeat a part and then go down. Uh, you know, that was a Jeff Loomis idea. Uh, he had that in a guitar world lesson. Send the patterns, passing tones, other techniques. Now, some of the people, if you want to listen to this in context, here's some people to look up. People that, you know, for the most part, are going to use uh, the same patterns. Like, they're going to use this. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, you know, Rusty Cooley, uh, Ingve. Jeff Loomis, for the most part, are going to be, um, you know, they're going to use the standard shapes. They might use them, you know, they might add little changes, but for the most part, it's going to be the same pattern. Uh, now, people that are going to throw a bunch of twists in are going to be uh, Thompson from Animals as Leaders, uh, Guthrie Govon, because he'll add, you know, He'll add some of the passing tones and maybe some different techniques. It won't be sweep arpeggios, but he'll add some sweep, he'll like some Akane picking and some sweeping with maybe a tap and a, some alternate picking. He's going to break it up a little bit. Marty Freeman does everything weird, so he's on the list. Then, uh, you know, Paul Gilbert, he does licks. I'm not, I, I am playing it to speed. But it's not, it's still an arpeggio, but it's not sweep picking. It's not economy picking, and it's not uh, alternate picking. Let's see if I can remember what it is. Uh, once I finally found the right shape, that's just like a major shape. So he's taking. Picking it the one string. String skipping. But it's, you know, and he'll really rip it up to speed, but. It's something that's extremely uncomfortable for me, that's because I haven't practiced it enough, but it's also a new approach to it. So, uh, you know, try finding different ways to play it. Maybe you might stumble across some, like, new techniques, uh, like slide picking. Look it up. Type it in. It's pretty interesting. It's kind of like mixing sweeping, tapping, and sliding all in the same technique, and it still kind of makes arpeggios and stuff, and that's, you know... It's really cool, but I want you to look at it. That's pretty neat. Honestly, because I can't do it also. I'm, it'd be awful to show you. But, uh, so maybe that'll give you some ideas for some new shapes, ideas. And, uh, hope it helped.